So you have probably heard that how all education in Norway is basically free. Yeah, you heard me right. So the question that now arises is that how can one apply to or how can one study medicine here in Norway? So this is going to be a series of videos where I take you guys through the academic requirements in order for you to be eligible to apply for medicine here in Norway. What's going on Sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Oslo here in Norway. On this channel, I share stuff about life as a medical student here in Norway, amongst other valuable stuff such as productivity and effective studying based on research and evidence. So if that sounds interesting, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now before we get into this video, here is a small disclaimer. So I am no legal advisor, nor am I any immigration lawyer. So I'm not going to be going into the details about how you you can apply for a student visa here to Norway. But however, I've also linked to the um, Norwegian Department of Immigration in the description box below. So feel free to check that out if you want to. Secondly, getting into medicine here in Oslo is insanely competitive. I mean, thousands of people apply each year. However, only a few hundred, I mean, I think it's around 200 who get accepted every year. So do not let that demotivate you or anything because it is going to be hard, but it's definitely worth it in the end. And now let's get to business. So the very first thing that everybody needs to learn, everybody who's looking to study medicine in Norway needs to do is to learn Norwegian language. So in this video we will be going through the Bergens test which is a Norwegian language exam. In the upcoming videos I will talk about how you can get into medicine here in Norway if you have completed your GCSE O levels, A levels and IB international baccalaureate and here the focus will be on the score and subject requirements um, and how you can convert your grades from these systems to the Norwegian grading system. In this video I will be covering three aspects of the Bergen's test. Firstly, what exactly is the Bergen's test? Secondly, who needs to take it? And thirdly, what are the passing requirements? In the next video or in part two of this video, I will be going over the following two points. Firstly, what exactly or how is the exam structured? And secondly, um, some practical information related to the exam day. And since time is the most precious thing in the world, you will find the timestamps in the description box below as well as over here so that you guys can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you want to watch. Now what exactly is the Bergen's test? So the Bergen's test is the exam that is officially recognized as the proof of your ability to speak Norwegian and is also the highest proficiency level exam. And this implies that there are obviously different proficiency levels amongst which amongst which the Bergen's test is the highest one. Uh, and keep in mind that when I say it's the highest proficiency level exam, this only applies to um, immigrants or people who are learning Norwegian or have Norwegian as their second language and not to people who are born and raised here in Norway and are studying, let's say, I don't know, Norwegian literature at the University of Oslo. So yeah, I think that makes, sense. that makes sense. So the point being that for immigrants or for people who are looking to study in Norway, the Bergen's test is the highest proficiency level exam. Does everyone need to take the Bergen's test? The answer is no, not everybody who's looking to study in Norway or move to Norway needs to take the Bergen's test. And now obviously if you decide to take the exam just for the sake of it, then that is a positive thing because you will get more fluent in the Norwegian language. But it's not a compulsion for everybody who's looking to study in Norway or move to Norway. And since this is the highest proficiency level exam, there are certain categories of workers and students for whom the Bergen's test can be relevant. So the two main categories are, firstly, international students who are looking to apply to a Norwegian university. And this excludes students who are applying for a master's program that is taught in English. But since in this context, we are talking about applying to medicine in Norway or in Oslo, uh, which is completely taught in Norwegian, you must take the Bergen's test in order to be eligible to apply for studying for study medicine here in Norway. However, there is a minor exception. So if you are attending college or high school here in Norway, which is known as the Vidrgomme, you don't have to take the Bergen's test, just like me, because I moved to Norway after completing my GCC O levels. So I moved to Norway and then I learned Norwegian for one year before um, applying to the Norwegian high school or college. So if you are if you are attending college here in Norway, then you don't have to take the Bergen's test. But if you have completed high school or college in your home country or outside Norway and are directly applying to a Norwegian university, then you must document your prof proficiency in the Norwegian language either by taking the Bergen's test, uh, which is the one I recommend the most, or by taking a lower language, lower proficiency level exam, uh, for example the Trintre, 
which I won't talk about in this video. So the second group of people for whom the Barrigan's test can be relevant are job applicants. And not every job applicant has to go through this procedure of taking the Barrigan's test, but especially two groups or two categories within this group of job applicants uh, must take the Baggins test. Firstly, held workers like doctors and other medical professionals who have completed their education outside Norway and are looking for work here in Norway. So they must document their proficiency in the, in the Norwegian language by taking the Baggins test. And secondly, individuals who are looking to work in educational institutions such as teachers and professors must also document the Norwegian language proficiency by taking this exam. Now let's talk about the passing requirements for the Baggins test. So the grading system is determined according to the CEFR or the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. Wow, I did it. <laughs> so firstly, what exactly is the CEFR thingy? So the CEFR is a framework that was issued by the Council of Europe to grade your language proficiency. There are six different scales ranging from the easiest one to the highest one. And this goes like A1 to A2, B1 to B2, C1 to C2, which is the hardest one. So C2 is the hardest one and A1 is the easiest one. So this means that there are different exams which are arranged according to these six different levels. So for example, if you take an exam which is called the A2, and if you pass that exam, then you will naturally have or achieve A2 level of language proficiency. And if you take, let's say, B1 exam, then you will achieve B1 level of um, language proficiency. Similarly, the Bergen's test corresponds to the B2 and C1 levels of Norwegian language proficiency. So let's say you pass your Bergen's test with a distinction or you perform extremely well, then you are awarded with the C1 level of Norwegian language proficiency. However, if your exam goes reasonably well, but not as good as the C1 level, then you are awarded with the B2 level of Norwegian language proficiency. However, sadly enough, um, if you perform anything below that or like below the B2 level, then you have basically failed your exam and you must reset the balance test. I think that is more than enough information for today. So what exactly have we gone through? Firstly, what exactly is the Baggins test? So the Baggins test is basically the highest exam for to document your proficiency in the Norwegian language. And not everyone who is looking to study Norway needs to take the Baggins test. Uh, because for people or for students like who are applying to a master's program which is taught in English, the Norwegian exam proficiency is not a requirement. Uh, however, if you are looking to apply to medicine, which is completely taught in Norwegian, then you must document your proficiency in the Norwegian language by taking this exam. And secondly, the Bergen's test awards you with either the C1 level of language proficiency, which is amongst the highest one, or secondly, the B2 level. Um, if you pass your exam with a distinction or you perform extremely well, then you are given the C1 grade, whereas if you perform really well but not up to the C1 level, then you are basically given the B2 passing grade. Anything below that means you have failed your exam and then you must retake your Baggins test. In the next video, I will be going through the exam structure and more practical information related to the very exam day. Meanwhile, you can watch this video where I talk about how I personally got into medicine at the University of Oslo here in Norway. So I hope you found the video useful and if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Take care guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.